Hey Code Creatives, this is Greg Fine coming at you with another charming little coding tutorial. This one is going to be all about the image component in Next.js. Now the image component was introduced in Next.js version 10 and what it does is it basically resizes and optimizes our images for us. When you have users that are on mobile devices with smaller viewports, you don't want to ship massive high quality images to these users. That would simply be a waste of bandwidth and resources. It would just be unnecessary and it would affect your page speed and page loading time. After all, a large part of your page size is due to the images that you send the user. So by the end of this video, you'll know how the image component can automate this resizing and optimization of images. So let's get started and learn how it works. So let's start out by doing a comparison between the basic HTML image tag and Next.js's image component. I'm here in VS Code and I have a basic Next.js application set up. And if you look in my public folder, which is where we can store images for application, I have a file called dog.jpg. And that's the one I'm going to be using for this example. So to do the basic HTML image tag, I'm going to come in here in my main element and I'm going to set up image. And for now, we'll get rid of this alt attribute just for the sake of this tutorial. And for my source, I'm going to do backslash dog.jpg. Now the backslash is how we access the image files in our public folder. The other thing I want to do is I want to give this my width attribute. And I know the initial width of this image is 1250 pixels. And I'm also going to give it the height attribute, which I know to be 833 pixels. So let's save that and let's go to the browser and see what we have. And there's a cute picture of my dog Maya dressed up as Santa's little helper. So the other thing I want you to notice here in the network tab, we can see our file, which has been served dog.jpg. We can see it's of type JPEG and the size is 342 kilobytes. So now let's go back to VS code and let's compare this with the image component from Next.js. Let's comment out the basic HTML image tag. And the way that we use the image component, it's really simple. We just import image from next slash image like that. And then we can come down again into our main element and we're going to use it like this. And there's some attributes which are required. We have to give it a source attribute. Again, we can say slash dog dot JPG to access that same image. And since we're using a path string here, we're going to need to give it a width and a height, just like we did before. So again, we'll do 1250 and a height of 833. And now let's save. And notice the difference here in the network tab. Here's our image being served. But this time, notice that it's in WebP format. And also the size has been reduced or optimized to 124 kilobytes basically for the same result. So WebP is an image format that attempts to achieve the same quality image, but just at a lower size. Now we're about to talk about one of the most important parts of using the image component, and that has to do with the layout attribute, which is going to help us to set up how our images behave responsively. But before we do that, I just want to point out two very simple things. One is that when we're using the width and height attributes in our image component, we're not going to set a value like pixels or rems or anything like that. We're just going to simply put in the number values. So 1250, that'll be interpreted as pixels. The same for height. The other thing is that right now we are referencing our image source as a path string here. But we can also do this another way. We can do a direct static import of the image like this. We can say import and we can give the image whatever name that we want to reference it. So let's call it Santa's little helper. And we'll say import Santa's little helper. And then we'll provide it with the path to this image. And here we can do it this way. We'll go into our public folder and we'll get that dog.jpg. And then for the source attribute, we can do it this way. We can give some curly braces and then we'll pass in the name that we gave to our image, Santa's little helper. And because we're doing it this way, we can actually get rid of the width and height attributes here. So if we save and we go to the browser, right now we can see that our image is loading just as before. So like I said, right now we're going to look at the layout attribute on the image component. And what this is going to allow us to do is to specify the way in which our images respond 
to changes in the width and height of the viewport. So let's first come here on line 12 and let's just get rid of the traditional image tag since we're just going to work with the image component. You can see here that there's no layout attributes set on this element. The default is intrinsic, so even if we don't provide it, it's going to default to a layout of intrinsic. But let's go ahead and set it explicitly, and then let's save and let's go to the browser and see how this one works. So in order to see this better, let's go and let's toggle device toolbar, which is going to emulate how our image works on a responsive device. And the way that intrinsic works is it doesn't scale up the image, it only scales it down for smaller viewports. So that image, the dimensions, like I said before, were 1250 by 833. So this image, even if we expand the viewport, you're going to see it stops at 1250 by 833. If we look at the image, we can see 1250 by 833 here. So that's intrinsic. It won't scale the image up. However, if we shrink the viewport, you can see that it'll scale the image down. So you now it's 852 by 567. And we can go even smaller. And now we're going to look at the second layout attribute, and that's called responsive. And by the way, if I haven't mentioned it, there's four different layout attributes we can use. There's fixed, fill, responsive, and intrinsic. So this is going to be responsive. So let's change layout from intrinsic to responsive. And what this one's going to do is it's going to shrink the image if the viewport shrinks, but it's also going to expand the image larger if the viewport expands. So let's save this and let's go back to the browser and check it out. So there's our image at 623 pixels wide and let's expand it. Let's continue to go past that 1250 and you can see that it expands beyond the original size of the image or the intrinsic size of the image. Let's actually clear this information in the network tab and I'm going to refresh and let's take a look at the actual image size that gets downloaded here. So this is going to be at a large size, 3,211 pixels wide. Let's refresh. And we can see that it downloaded a 124 kilobyte version of the image. But now let's go and let's say that we started off on a small mobile device. Let's clear and let's refresh again. And notice this time that we only downloaded a 38.9 kilobyte image. So Next.js is serving up only the image size that's needed by the viewport. So now the third layout attribute we're going to look at is fixed. So let's change responsive here to fixed. And this is going to be the most stubborn attribute. It's simply not going to budge no matter what we do to the viewport. So let's go to the browser and check out here. This is our original image size, 1250 by 833. Let's try to expand. We can see the image is staying at 1250 by 833. And let's try to shrink. And once again, it's just staying at 1250 by 833. So that's a pretty simple one there. Now this last layout attribute that we're going to look at is called fill. So let's change fixed to fill. And what this one is going to do is it's going to work with the parent containing element. So here, that element is this main tag. And we've given it a class name of styles.main. And that is coming from this home module CSS file. So here on this main element, you can see that we've set the width to 1250 and the height to 833 pixels, which are the original intrinsic dimensions of the image. So when we see the image, we're going to see it at its original size. However, what if we change the width of this containing element and instead we made it 2250 pixels and we save and now let's go check it out. And notice that the aspect ratio has gotten distorted because with fill, basically the image is going to expand or shrink by width or height to fill the containing element. So you can see the image here has a width of 2250 pixels. The other thing important to note about using fill is that the parent containing element must have a position of relative if you do want that child element to fill the parent containing element. So basically, if we want our images, when we're using the image component to be responsive, we want to use either layout of responsive or the default of layout intrinsic. Now that we've seen the layout attribute, let's look at another cool attribute we can use, and this one is called quality. 
So what this one is going to allow us to do is to fine tune the amount of compression or the quality level that we want on the image. So it's an integer between 1 and 100. So if we go to the browser now and we see the default, we can see that it's downloaded an image at 124 kilobytes. Let's give it a quality of, let's say, 50. And after we made that quality setting change, we got an image of 84.6 kilobytes. And the image more or less looks about the same in terms of quality, so we might choose to explicitly set that quality level and save in terms of file size. Now the final thing I want to show you about the image component is that images are lazy loaded by default. So this means that the images are only loaded when the viewer kind of requests them or starts to scroll down to them in the viewport. So as you can see here, I've created four image components now, and I've brought in these four clown images into my public folder. And for the source attributes, I've set their paths as path strings. I've explicitly set their width and height attributes, and I've chosen responsive for the layout attribute. So now if we go to the browser, we'll see these cute images of clowns. And there we go. We can see this very cute clown up here. And as you can see, there's the second clown, which is sort of coming into view. And if you look down at the Network tab, you can see that we've only loaded the first two clown images, even though we know that we have four. So since lazy loading is enabled by default, the third and fourth clown images are only going to be loaded when they start to come into a certain distance in the viewport. So let's start scrolling down, and I want you to pay attention to that Network tab and notice when the third and fourth clown images get loaded. So here I go scrolling, there's the second, and now you check out the Network tab, and you can see that since we're getting close to where the third clown image is going to come into view, it's actually gone ahead and loaded that image up, and we continue to scroll, and there's the third clown, and you can see in the Network tab that it's loaded up now the fourth clown, which is about to come into view. So there's lazy loading, which is enabled by default and which helps the performance of our web app or our website. And of course, we can counter this behavior if we want by setting a loading attribute equal to eager. So in this video, we learned all about the image component in Next.js, and we saw how it can help us to really speed up our creation of responsive, optimized images. Now, there's more that can be done with the image component, but I just wanted to introduce you to the most essential basics of the image component. To learn more about the image component and what you can do with it, I'd refer you to the Next.js documentation online, which is excellent. Now, if you feel like you got some value out of this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And please let me know in the comments down below what topics you'd like to see covered in the future. Thanks for watching.